Thank you, Corrine. President Biden is the oldest president in U.S. history. Why does White House staff treat him like a baby? No one treats the president of the United States, the commander in chief, uh, like a baby. So there's this book that says that's ridiculous. When staff it's a ridiculous back claim. What sounded like a call for regime change in Russia, the president. Uh, quote, rather than owning his failure, he fumed to friends about how he was treated like a toddler. Was John Kennedy ever babied like that? So look, uh, I'll say this. Um, there's going to be a range, always a range of books uh, that are uh, about every administration, as you know, uh, that's going to have a variety of claims. That is not unusual. That happens all the time. And we're not going to litigate those here. That's something that we're not going to uh, speak to. There is one thing that I do want to, because I think I was asked this question last week by one of your colleagues about this particular excerpt uh, that they uh, were referring to. And so I'll say this, you know, we did see the excerpt, excerpt go, the context uh, of the excerpt, and it seemed to be making the opposite overall point about how the value of his experience and wisdom resulted in rallying the free world against authoritarianism, which is important. We have seen this, you all have seen this, and passage of the most historic agenda in recent history in his handling of foreign policy, like rallying the world around Ukraine, as you just heard from our national security, national security advisor, who laid out in really good questions that your colleagues asked about how the president is moving forward, about Ukraine, uh, about kind of leading into these conversations that he's going to be having at the G20. Why do you think it is that in a Wall Street Journal poll, two thirds of Democrats think President Biden is too old to run again? Look, here's what I know. Here's what I can speak to. I can speak to that a president who has wisdom. I can speak to a president who has experience. I can speak to a president who has done uh, historic, has taken historic action and has delivered in historic pieces of legislation. And that's important. When the last guy who was in this, uh, in the Oval Office, uh, talked about infrastructure uh, week, it was a joke. And the president passed a pretty important piece of legislation in a bipartisan way because of his wisdom, because of his experience. And now we have uh, infrastructure decade. And it doesn't stop there. It starts, last week we talked about how the president beat Big Pharma something that elected officials and politicians have been trying to do for 33 years, and he's been able to do that. And we introduced 10, the first tranche, the, f the first 10 uh, drugs that Medicare can now negotiate on, right? And it's going to save money for our seniors, for Americans across the country. The, the gentleman that introduced the president, Stephen, who's 71 years old, paying $16,000 a month, $16,000 a month, just to stay alive because he had cancer and diabetes, and he cannot retire because he's because he has to pay sixteen thousand dollars a month, and because of the work that this president has done, he doesn't have to do that anymore. And I'll say one last thing. I know you have a follow-up, probably about five more, but let me just say this one last thing: is that the interesting thing about this is that the president has done these historic pieces of legislation, whether it's the bipartisan infrastructure legislation, whether it's the American Rescue Plan, whether it's Chips and Science Act, uh, whether it's the Infl Inflation Reduction Act. There are some Republicans, right, in the House, in the Senate, that did not vote for any of these legislations that I just laid out, who go back to their state, go back to their district, and take credit for something that the president did. So this is not unusual. They did this in 2019, they did this in 2020, and the pre they did this in 2022, and the president continues to prevail. Okay, just one more. The president sure. said over the long weekend that he hasn't had the occasion to go to East Palestine. I just haven't been able to break. The derailment was on February 3rd. President Biden has not had a break since February 3rd. The president will go to East Palestine. He promised that he would, and he will. Uh, you saw him. On, uh, so he was not on a break when he was in Lake Tahoe? I will say this again. The president is going to go to East Palestine, as he has said that he is committed to do. You saw him just this Saturday visit uh, a rural area, right, that was uh, devastated. Some parts were devastated by uh, Hurricane Idalia, and he was there with the First Lady. They were able to hear directly from the American people, and he was able to talk about what is it that they need. What is it? What else do they need from the federal government? So the president is going to go to East Palestine. I don't have a time or, or date to announce at this time, but he will go.